Hello, I'm Roddy Hamilton, the Minister of New Kilpatrick Parish, and thank you that you have made space today for us to join you. We offer a, a simple reflective service today, a listening place, where we are all invited to tune into some of the silences around us, some of the, the sounds of creation, some of the voices we hear, and listen not for God's voice if we imagine God speaking, but rather God's presence beyond and between words. And in listening to God in such a way, we learn to listen to our neighbour and our world and creation. So let us pause, light a candle, take a breath and centre ourselves. May we pause, O oh God, draw breath deeply and pause and wait on you, on ourselves, to let go that which we need to let go, lay down that which is too heavy for us to carry. Let you hold that which we can no longer hold ourselves and wait. Wait for the moment when we feel the silence. Know it is part of ourselves, that sacred space where we meet you and wait. Wait for your word, yet unwritten, yet undefined, yet unexplained, but real, present. The word that speaks our names. And wait. Wait and in such a place so different from the world, find this a holy space, thin and close, in which we may pause, draw breath, and listen beyond the world into the greater truth of your being here. No words, there aren't any. No understanding, for we can't. Just presence, love, grace, listening. So be it. Amen.
we're opening the good book at James this week and for the next few weeks. It's a, a controversial book as there has been plenty of debate for the last thousand and a half years whether James should actually be in the Bible at all. Luther had little time for it as it seemed to contradict all of Paul's theology. Some say it was written in order to contradict Paul's ideas about faith and others that it was simply an understanding of faith in a different way. I find these letters difficult, Paul's included, because there's a lot of systematic arguing, debate over terminology, and and that's fine for those who have big brains. But I am definitely a bear of little brain and much prefer my theology served more imaginatively, discovering the truth found in a good story. As humanity grew more enlightened, we seem to have dropped the tradition of telling the truth through story, and now we fall out over the meaning of words. Can we not just go back to storytelling? People beyond the church just aren't interested in, nor can make sense of, these one-sided, for we only have one side of the argument in these letters. But as a church, we can offer some fabulous stories to help us navigate life. Having said that, and we will say more in the next few weeks, James offers some insights into community life. And so he invites us first to listen, really listen. It is the beginning of relationships. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. If any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are righteous and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Amen.
how would the church look if our first act in any project or decision or relationship was to listen? I suspect we imagine ourselves quite good at listening. After all, it is what our churches are designed to do. Pews, after all, are designed to be hard enough and uncomfortable enough for us all to sit up and listen. They often end up being used for a wee nap in a, after only a couple of minutes, especially listening to myself. What if the church, not just the space, but our faith community, our activities, our raison d'etre, were actually designed round listening to our neighbour, listening to the world, listening to creation, listening to God? What would that look like? Our worship, not designed to appease God with praise and glory as if we are in need to make sure God is happy enough with us before we can do anything, or designed to show how good and faithful we are by learning some theological understanding. But worship was first listening, connecting in relationship, in listening to our stories with our neighbours, with the world, with creation, with God. Is it not true our our sole purpose as disciples is to live in relationship with our neighbour, with our world, with creation, with God? Yet we seem to have developed a model of worship that involves a, a lot of talking, especially in the Protestant tradition with an emphasis rightly on learning and understanding. But is that our first priority? The writer of James seems to have experience of this conflict and he writes, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue. And this is a deeply spiritual practice. This is how we model the kingdom, says James. This is how we create good, faithful practice. Listen, then speak. And how timeous and prophetic must that be for us in the church now and in our nation, that our ears are directed outwards beyond the circle we inhabit in the church or in our politics or in our communities, away from ourselves and the theological or political disagreements that are so important to us, yet so trivial to anyone looking on from the outside who are crying for food and equality and hope and opportunity. When the church, like so many old institutions, are in crisis, it's the quality of our relationship with others that will mark us out as being existentially different. Our ability to listen, to take into ourselves the stories and gifts and pain of others and let that listening change the relationship we have with our neighbour and singularly fail to judge others, rather love, because listening brings us close. In listening, we've been given a gift of honesty, the gift of trust from the other, the gift of compassion towards our neighbour. Perhaps as disciples, if we followed James's thought, We would measure our faith by the relationships we have and not by our understanding or even good works, which is the main theme in James, much to the chagrin of Luther and and so many who feel James' letter should never have made it into the Bible. But what if we measured our faith not by works, not by understanding, but by the quality of relationships we have with each other and our parish. Those relationships are our notice board, our shop window. They are much more easily understood than our words and our beliefs and our rituals. Listening takes commitment. Words are easy. We know the difference between the two and we see that difference too often in the negative. As a church, now, in this season of deciding how we will be in the future. May we dare listen, make space for that gift, the time, the grace, that the presence listening requires. May listening begin our worship, 
our relationships, our future, a kingdom-shaped gift we can be to our parish and our world right now. Thank you once again for the invitation to join you today. Thank you to those who created the slides for the hymns for the video and also to Alfred who read our passage today. So thank you to all of you for taking part in creating this video for everyone. What's happening in the life of the congregation this week? Well, Wednesday, that's the 1st of September at 7.30, we have Think Tank, which is looking at how we can create the life of the congregation blending what's happening online with face-to-face -face, um, relationship building there so that's on zoom at 7 30 on wednesday the first we have various new cop 26 um, ideas with new information information from christian aid for you to read letters to write and our cop 26 window we're looking for pictures of vegetables and, and food and um, and if you can post these, email them to us at mail at nkchurch.org.uk or post them through the man's letterbox or the church letterbox, then we will paste them, attach them to the, the window. They're creating um, four great big window panels and these will be happening over the next couple of months. McMillan Coffee Day is happening. Details are in the bulletin and you can receive the bulletin by subscribing from the website or you can just download it from the website directly at nkchurch.org.uk. These are some of the activities that are happening in the life of the congregation. Let's gather them and blend them and tangle them with the needs of the world. Let us pray.
Loving God, may we have ears to hear and listen to the world, her needs, her joys, her people, her land. May we listen to the new song each morning in creation and know its worth, its value, a creation that has integrity and seeks justice. Sustainability shared today with enough for tomorrow. And are people so hungry in places and overfilled in others? As we use land and sea unfairly, caught up in an economy of wealth rather than one of justice. As we listen, may you be heard. Maybe listen to the voices of those in Afghanistan and Yemen and Syria and Tigray. All those in conflict, crying for a freedom beyond the limits of religion and politics and the whims of other nations. A shared responsibility for all of life. As we listen, may you be heard. May we listen to our communities, to the prejudices we have, the fears we hold, the diversity we share, hearing your voice, O oh God, in the voices of everyone, beyond our silos and circles, all our longings, all our hopes. And as we listen, may you be heard. May we listen to what can be possible, a greater equality, a welcoming door, a growing together, and wary of words that are hollow, politics that are selfish, self-preservation before giving of self. And as we listen, may you be heard. And may we listen to families and friends, those closest to us, those whose stories we know best, for those ill physically and mentally, those grieving and hurting, those worried and anxious, those down and sad, those celebrating life. And as we listen, may you be heard. So be it. Amen.
go in peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>